Hi, this is Nilan. So today in this video, we'll talk about how to create a floating action button in Flutter. The floating action button uh, represents a critical user action on the screen. This widget looks like a rounded button floating on the bottom right corner of the screen and hence it is very accessible and within the reach of the users. For this example, I have created a uh, sample project in Android Studio. Let's head on to that and see how it works. So as you can see in my sample example, I've created a uh, sample uh, Flutter application that works on both iOS and Android. Now in this application, we have like a three classes. Uh, as you can see, we have like a my application, then we have home page and we have a uh, home page uh, state. Now the, there is a main method, which is the entry point for all of our, uh, all, all the Flutter application. This is where the Flutter application launch. All the standard stuff. So let's head on straight to uh, creating a um, floating action button. The scaffold widget is basically everything that you can see on the screen. Uh, so basically includes the app bar. There could be a floating action button and there could be a body at a, at a associated with it. Now to create a floating action button, we have the property. Let's use that floating action button property. And here we need to, it, it takes the object of floating action button. Now we can create three ways, uh, a floating action in button in three ways. There are three constructors within, within this class. Uh, either use, use the default constructor, which is basically use the default styling for your action button. And there are other two, other two options available, which you will see shortly in this video. Now, let us create a, a simple action button here. And uh, obviously this is empty, so we need to configure a few things. Like first thing we configure is we need to configure the on pressed state. So this is basically a function, a mandatory function, which is required to create an action button. This represents what you do when user clicks on the button. For example, uh, when user clicks on the button, you move to a different page or you do some action. So that action will be defined here. Okay, as part of this example, I'm not doing that, but uh, on pressed is one of the essential key property that you must define when you're creating a floating action button. Now, this is uh, having said and done, uh, what we need to do now is let's create a, um, a child within the action button. So floating action button has a property called child, which basically takes, uh, let's say for now, we use uh, icons. Now I create a settings icon. Uh, I'm using the actions provided in the Flutter package. And the icons, let's use some colors to this action. I'm just using white uh, for my action button color. Okay, now this is a basic uh, floating action button we have created. Let's run it and see how, how it looks. So if you're compiling your application for the first time, it takes a while uh, for the very first time, but in uh, every other subsequent run, there is a hot reload is available in Flutter, which means that it doesn't have to come go through the whole compilation process. Instead, it will come instantly, very quickly. Okay, so as you see, there's a floating action button created right here, okay? Um, now we can customize this action button color and everything else really. Uh, let's see. First, let's see a color because the background doesn't look really great on white color text. So let's use a color property, background color property. So for background color, I'm going to use colors.cyan because that's the property I've, color that I've selected here. And I'm going to use uh, 800 shade. 
Now, when you run it, as you can see, it doesn't need a lot of time. It just comes instantly. Uh, it is hot loaded. Now, so we have customized the background color and we have also customized the, the we have added in a uh, child, which is an icon. Now let's use certain uh, other things. For example, elevation, control the elevation property. Now you see what is elevation? Elevation is basically uh, a shadow, which is, you see, now you don't see any elevation here because we've made it zero. Whereas I can make the elevation property to 10 to show it a little more shadow here. Okay, now let's go to a default elevation property. Maybe uh, I think it is four, uh, but if you remove it as well, it will add the default elevation property. Okay, now uh, the next thing that we want to do is obviously this uh, floating action button is uh, a rectangular shape. Now let's change that to a circular shape. To make that a circular shape, uh, what we can do is we can use the shape property uh, available within floating action button. Okay, now within the shape, let's make it circular, circular borders shape. Okay. Now you see it is circular now. So you see uh, the shape has been changed to a circular shape. But if you don't want circular shape, you want rectangular with more uh, radius, with, with a customized radius, you can do that as well. And to do that, let's use shape and then round rectangular border. And within the round rectangular border, you need to pass certain other properties. Uh, for example, you can use border radius and let's say border radius i can use it as border radius dot circular and dot circular radius and i'm passing let's say uh, 20 20 pixels the size is 20 dimension 20 is basically a floating number uh, you provide 20 and based on that it will create a rounded rectangular border Yeah, it's created a rounded rectangular border. Maybe you don't see a lot of difference, but if I change it to maybe let's say two or four, you can see there's a subtle difference in how the button is appearing. Okay, so these are some of the basic customization that floating action button supports out of box. But there are a few more that we could do with it. Now, how about making it a little larger or making it a little smaller? So first, let's see how do we make it larger. So to make it larger, we can do uh, we can use the uh, uh, the constructor, the large constructor provided by the floating action button widget. So let's use that. So if you use the large button and save it, uh, now let's go back and see uh, that you can notice a huge uh, floating action bar uh, button has come up here. Now this is too big you probably don't want to show that uh, have, have such a huge um, huge button on your screen that looks like throwing on your face but yeah you have the option to customize if you want if you ever want to have it uh, now we have another constructor which makes it smaller uh, smaller than the regular size of the floating action button and let's do that and see yeah, the screenshot as you see here is too small. It's a too small floating action button. But again, this is also quite a small action button to be visible on the screen and for the user. Hence, uh, probably we don't want to use that as well. But yeah, you have the options. Now we have made, let's roll back that into the normal regular action button, which is the standard size here. Now we have other customization available as well for example how about showing a label or a label alongside with the icon if you want to do that uh, that is by default not supported within the default constructor of a floating action button class and in order to do that what we need to do is we need to use the constructor called extend 
and using the extend constructor we can achieve uh, showing an icon and a label side by side but uh, the extend constructor doesn't have a property called child instead it comes with two other properties uh, one is label in order to display the label that you want to display uh, the label property you can pass a text widget uh, into it now let's create a text widget and pass the label settings okay now as you see the label is appearing on the uh, floating action let's create an icon again i'm going to use the same code here which you created earlier okay now you see this icon appears which is a white color because we have colored it here uh, but because the label we haven't passed any color it is using the theme color which is the dark text now let's change that let's change that to a white text so it looks more more good and to do that we can use the style property within the text widget and the style property takes the text style and within the text style we have a color okay now as you can see both the icon and the label are appearing in a white color and they also appear side by side this is how we create a, a floating action button and we have gone through all the various possibility of customization supported in flutter uh, i hope this video helps you to to further your uh, flutter learning journey thank you very much for watching and please subscribe my channel if you like our videos thank you very much